Now, writing copy for your business or for your business's website can be a tedious task. I get it. We just launched my new website. I feel like I birthed two babies this year. One, <clears throat> the website I carried a lot longer than the actual human baby. Okay, but the thing is your website, my website, it's got to work when we can't. I believe that so firmly it is worth putting the time into figuring out how to get great words that actually convert and pull their weight. That's why in this video, you're going to learn how to make your website copywriting process work for you. Because whether it is your homepage, your services page, about page, blog post, whatever it is, most of us just want to get that done, checked off our list and moved on so we can go do other things. I've got two kids. I get it. But if you're like me, you kind of hate the blinking cursor. And that's why in this video, I'm going to take you through five ways, tips that you can do to start writing faster, whether it's your website copy that you need to tackle or a blog post or just some other business writing task. Let's be honest, that's one thing that's going nowhere fast in your business, right? Tip number one, hack your time. So depending on whether you or I want to write creatively or faster, there's probably a better time in the day for you. If you want to write faster, most of us need to opt for time earlier in the day. I read The One Thing by Gary Keller, probably my second year in business. It's still on my go-to list for books about business today. He writes, select four hours first thing in the morning when you've got the most willpower. That is usually when I work best, when I'm a maker in the morning, a manager in the afternoon. But if I want to write more creatively, it's usually best to write whenever you're groggiest, actually, whether that, again, is possibly early in the morning or even later at night. Wired Magazine referenced an Albion College study and they tapped into college students to see when their most creative answers came. And what was so interesting is that they said the largest lesson is sleepy students benefit from the inability to focus. Their minds are drowsy, disorganized, humming with associations that they'd normally ignore. So interesting, right? Typically when I'm doing client work, which is writing since I'm a copywriter, I can kind of turn it on and just be in the zone and actually write and crank out the work. But when it comes to my own business, sometimes I'm the hardest client to write for. What I found is that I could shake off some of those nerves if I started writing really early in the morning, like four o'clock, five o'clock, when I was just kind of still dreaming, I think. Or maybe it was very late at night, my kids were down, I could pour a glass of wine or a cup of tea and just sit down and just have the freedom to write. If that's you and you tend to put a little pressure on yourself when you're writing, then try the time hacking tip. And that segues me right into tip number two here is embrace the sloppy copy. I feel like this almost sounds elementary, but I had to remember this as I was writing my website. Sometimes you just need to get that first draft, second draft, third draft, even over and done, and you can come back to it and reiterate it. And by the time I finish the 11th draft, it feels like it sometimes looks absolutely nothing like the first, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth, but I had to get through those to even get to the point of having an 11th draft. Writer Anne Lamont talks about this in her book, Bird by Bird. Start each day anywhere and let yourself do it badly. Anybody else a perfectionist like me, letting myself do something badly is so very difficult. So again, maybe this tip sounds elementary. I feel like this is the hardest of all of these tips mindset wise to wrap my brain around. Back when I was in corporate marketing days, we never were allowed to turn in something to a client without looking at it another day with fresh eyes, as we called it. That may help you too. You will always need to come back and edit. That's part of the process. I've done videos and have an entire blog post on how to self edit, but you're never going to get those incredible final drafts if you don't go through the process of pulling out all the different things like a magician that could be in the hat and then you'll get the bunny. I don't know where that analogy came from. Here's a bonus tip here because sometimes I've found that if I don't have all the information or if I don't know that I have all the information, I'll let that be my procrastination juice. So one thing that helps me keep writing instead of getting stuck or hitting a point in writing where, oh, I don't have that bit of information. I need to go bunny trail. And then before I know it, I'm like watching TikToks. One thing that helps a lot is this journalism speak TK. It stands for to come. But if you're writing and you hit a piece in your writing where, oh, you don't have that information, just sub it out with TK and keep writing. Don't stop. Let placeholders work for you. Tip number three, use the Pomodoro technique or give yourself a hard stop. You've probably heard of Parkinson's law before, the concept that work either expands or contracts to fit the time available for it. Essentially, if you have four hours to finish a task, it's gonna take you four hours. If you tell yourself it's only gonna be able to take you 30 minutes, you'll probably fit it in closer to 30 minutes. That is a very crude explanation, but essentially download and use the Pomodoro app. It is 
fabulous. It's free. I use it all the time. It will let yourself work for 25 minutes and then be off for five minutes. You can repeat this system, so on and so forth until you're done with something. Basically, you're sprinting out 25 minutes of grind time. No snacks, no getting up to pet your dogs, no scrolling the internet. You actually have to do the task and then you're free. You can get up and stretch your legs. But I promise you, if you give yourself these little bite-sized chunks to get through with the hard stop at the end of it, you'll be more likely to complete things. Tip number four, always, always start with structure. I write for a living, very rarely am I just going to open up a document or a Word tab and just start writing. Even when I'm writing in my journal for free time, for fun, I like a prompt. I like something to just get me going. There's a John Caples quote that copywriting should be approached the same way an engineer approaches the building of a bridge. Heck yes, start with a structure, a framework, a formula, and let yourself fill that in based off of the order and the hierarchy that the messaging should come in. This is why I created the copy bar. It's the template shop side of my business. I love it so much. And there are a lot of templates that I use all of the time as prompts to just get my wheels turning, get my juices flowing. You can and should use some sort of a framework or an outline or a template if you're sitting down to write a pillar blog piece in your business. Mine's in the shop. I used it to even create this video. Things like captions or canned email responses, sales pages, homepage about pages, subject lines, there's some sort of tried and true framework or hypothesis that someone has put out there and tested and you might as well see if you can take that and riff off of it or at least just don't start with nothing. I haven't said it in one of my videos for a while so it's time. Uh, best practices are essentially pulled ignorance unless you know how they're going to work on your audience or if you're at least willing to test it. So while having a framework or a formula to play off of is good, at the end of the day you're accountable and responsible for seeing how that performs with your audience or with your brand and with your messaging and then basing your findings and tweaking things based off of what comes in, right? what data comes back, but it's at least somewhere to start, right? Tip number five related to this is always pull your research and start to create some sort of a copy bank. Can't even tell you how much I relied on my copy bank as I wrote my website, pulling little snippets that, oh yeah, I pulled that like three years ago and I love that phrase. I just have never had a place to put it before until now and I can slide it in. I was definitely a collage kid in the 90s 2000s when I grew up. And no, we don't have the 17 and the YM magazines to pull from now, but it's kind of that same process. It's, I want to be able to look at a whole sampling of phrases and words that I can pull from and assemble the best message possible. So I keep those messages and corral them in what I call a copy bank. Quotes, quips, one-liners that made you laugh. Absolutely, voice of customer data and research. I've done a video where I talked about three ways that you can kind of kick off your swipe file and get going, so that may help you out if this concept is a little bit new. As far as housing this, Trello, Evernote, Asana, whatever tool you're already using, don't complicate it, just use that. And then be like a sticky wad of tape or something rolling around and as you start to hear and pick up on little bits of sticky messaging, no matter where you hear it, it could be from somebody talking on a podcast, it could be from a book you're reading or a magazine you're flipping through or some Instagram account you're scrolling. When you see a little phrase or a snippet, just grab that and put it in your collage bank and you'll start to build this repertoire of words over time that you can then turn around and use use and insert in your copy. I said it in the video last week, it's a classic copywriting quote that copywriting is not written, it is assembled, and that's what I'm talking about here. Again, check out that shop item if you wanna see a little bit more of what I mean here. And that brings me to tip number six, write somewhere that's actually enjoyable. This goes to the concept of grand gestures. Maybe you've heard how JK Rowling would like rent out an entire hotel room as she worked to finish the Harry Potter books. That's what I mean here. How can you create a space that is lovely and enjoyable and you actually want to sit down and write in? I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that I did to finish the gargantuan of a website that we just launched. That candle back there, I bought two of them. I did put them on the business. And I know when I light that candle, it means go time. I am priming myself, I'm teaching myself that the only way that I can light that candle is if I'm gonna be head down working on something furiously, putting every single bit of my energy into it, and then when I blow it out, I'm done and I'm walking away. Headphones, white noise, the Calm app, you can get so many great sounds on the free version of it. The premium version's pretty good too. Another thing I did a lot was go to my favorite coffee shop in town and I knew when I got there, I was gonna focus and I was gonna work and I'd only let myself go as a treat. And it also, back to the comment that I made about the Pomodoro time and going on sprints, I knew that I had a hard stop where I was gonna have to leave and go home. I couldn't stretch it past that. Knowing that I had a hard stop 
pushed me to get a lot of writing done and copy done for the website so I could turn it over to my team to look at and edit before we pulled it in and started installing. Having a good workspace you actually enjoy writing in, hacking your time and writing when you're best on, whether it be creatively or geared up to write quickly, giving yourself a hard stop, whether it's through an app or through some kind of hard timestamp you actually need to quit working at, and always having some sort of copy bank system ready that you can pull together the collage of phrases that you want to say and you have that voice of customer data ready and at hand. All of that is going to equip you to write your copy that much faster for your business. If you found this video helpful, be sure to tap it. It, give it that thumbs up and don't miss the video that's on your screen right now because I'm going to break down and show you a template that you can use to structure your pillar pieces of content and go-to blog posts for your business. I promise you'll win in on these copy tips. I'll see you in the next video.